All right, welcome back. It's Art with Anderson. Today, I have a really uh, exciting thing. We're going to jump from black and white into the world of color. And uh, I'm going to be using colored pencils today. So uh, I, <laughs> yeah, Jim says he's got to leave and find some uh, colored pencils. The thing is, is that if you have some colored pencils around the house, those will do. I am going to be featuring some of the... Um, a couple years ago, I invested in a big set of these Prismacolor Premier pencils. And just FYI, this is since I'm just starting this on YouTube here, there are some affiliate Amazon links below. If you're interested in checking those out, if you click on one of those links uh, and purchase something, I would get a small cut of that um, commission. So just FYI, um, you know, that's hopefully going to support this channel as we go. But I'll talk a little bit about these pencils and why I like to use them, but any colored pencils will work for this. Uh, and I'm hoping to have you guys uh, on your way to using these colored pencils better than what we kind of, we most people take colored pencils, they start with, you know, kind of elementary school coloring within the lines and they never really think about it again. So I'll be showing you some specific techniques, how to get the most out of those pencils um, and really take it to another level. Another thing I'll mention is if you look at the links in the description, I did, um, I created this worksheet uh, based on a drawing I'd done of a motorcycle that I'm working on uh, in the garage, like an actual motorcycle. But I just figured having something pre-drawn here is a good way to practice some of these techniques. Um, you know, if you have another coloring book, one of the things to look for in a coloring book if you're going to practice these techniques is having kind of light lines so you don't have to worry too much about like the line sticking out. But Without further ado, I'm going to kind of introduce some of the basic techniques. So while you're warming up uh, or finding those colored pencils, um, it would be really neat if you could just tune in and just check out some of the things that we probably never look too closely at. Uh, and there is another video, which I'll link after this video goes um, on the recorded side, that how to use your colored pencils like a, a pro. There's some other deeper issues that go into that uh, as well. Uh, but we'll dive in without much further ado. So thanks again, and feel free. Uh, I see Kate, Joe, Ben, Jim, uh, Nancy, all joining us today. So thanks again. Let's get started. So um, before we dive into this motorcycle, I have a couple lines here that I drew, uh, similar to what we did when we did shading with black and white. Um, we're going to just practice and get a feel for these pencils. So one thing to keep in mind when you're sharpening pencils, especially if you invest in expensive ones, sometimes I use a knife to get that edge, but otherwise just be careful when you uh, put soft colored pencils in a pencil sharpener. I like to use like the bigger side if you have an option so it gets this steep angle because if the soft lead, uh, if you turn too hard on it, sometimes I can crack it and that can be pretty frustrating. So we're just keeping that nice and sharp. Let's try this kind of peach color. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to be holding this thing to the side. So notice how far back I'm holding this pencil. Okay, I'm using the edge to draw. And then I'm going to demonstrate how that's going to look different than something if I use the point. Okay, so let's compare it. Here's the point of the pencil. You see the difference there? When you're using any type of pencil, especially colored pencils, you have to pay attention to the actual shape of the tip and then what part of the tip you're using. So by simply shading on the side, let's draw a picture of it. Okay, here's your triangle. There's wood to about here. All right, if you draw with the tip, you're going to get essentially this size line. However, if you tilt it to the side, you can get a line that's literally this thick, right, if you pull it into the side. Another feature of that is it's not going to press into the paper. So if you have a really sharp pencil, I'll even use like a regular pencil. Watch this. I'm just going to draw, but I'm pressing pretty hard. Okay. And then if I lightly shade in with another color, you'll notice how that color doesn't really stick to that area because it's actually a little valley that we created. If you, Especially if you use like a really uh, light, hard pencil, like a 6H. Let's check this out. If I press down really hard, thing is, is there's like, even if I erase this, check this out. I'm going to erase that line that I just drew. And if I do this over the top, you'll be able to see some of that line that I created. 
And that's almost like if you ever do a texture rubbing. You can't see it too much on here, but it's something to keep in mind. Let me see if you can get a little closer to that. Uh, I don't know, but it can get frustrating if you're trying to color something in. Oh, there we go. It's popping out a little bit more. And then you end up with these little lines in there. Can you see those white lines? So something to keep in mind is we have a lot of things going on that you're probably not thinking about when you're just trying to color in a shape, okay? Now the other thing we'll be talking about and using in this video is how to blend colors. So the other choice is like what colors blend well with others, okay? And what I wanna challenge you to do is if you have a black colored pencil, I want you to put that aside and not use it for most of this stuff. I look at black as like icing on the cake and I very rarely use it. It's only when I need to darken some things up. So I'm gonna teach you some blending techniques to really help you out with this, okay? So let's start with some basic color theory. I got this nice blue chunk right here. And let's say I wanna dull it down a little bit. So I could, if I wanna make it darker, right? I could add something like a black, but we're gonna avoid that. And blue is an already dark color but I'm actually gonna choose something that is more orange. And we're gonna see how layering those together, you'd think that a dark color, making it adding by adding a light one, is not going to be the most interesting combination. But notice how this gets darker by adding orange, which is a light color, to the blue. So what's going on here? And one very simple thing to learn, if you learn one thing about color mixing, is that colors have an opposite, okay? And if you haven't worked with a color wheel in a while, uh, I'm just going to tell you those opposites, all right? So the cool thing about them is that they cancel each other out and they amplify each other. And I'll show you some situations here. So blue and orange are my favorite. Part of it's because I went to the University of Illinois, go Illini. Uh, we feel yeah that you got kicked you know kicked off campus so hopefully you're doing all right but the deal is blue and orange work really well when they're side by side they actually make each other appear brighter or more intense so let's take this orange and put it right next to the blue and notice that that looks really bright compared to the blue so that's really neat blue and orange when they're next to next to each other and not mixed, they actually vibrate in your brain, like your eyes. And the thing is they make each other look even more intense. Let me add an even oranger thing here so you can get a sense of that. So we can really take advantage of opposite colors. Now the other opposite set is let's start with red, okay? We'll just create another circle here and we'll color it in. Now red has an opposite, does anyone know it by chance? If you're in class and your teacher taught you this, I actually never memorized this stuff until I like got to college. Like I kind of just got a feel for it. But if anyone doesn't know, it's green is the opposite of red. So if I really cover this up, okay, let's try adding green to the outside and see how that looks. That looks very bright to me especially when it's right next to the red. So if you want your colors to stand out, put it next to its opposite. But what's unique about it, if we wanna darken the color or neutralize it, make it sit farther back, see how light this green is? Let's see if we can darken this red on this side by layering it over the top. It certainly doesn't look green to me on here, but what we did is we just created a shadow or a darker value by adding nothing but color. It's hard for you guys to see on this picture, so I'll pick a darker green so you can see it a little better. So if you can avoid using black when you're mixing colors, you're gonna get a better understanding of what's going on. So see how I quickly darkened the color without adding black? And then what's the other set of opposites? Let's start with yellow, which is a primary color. Let's just color that in real quick. Does anyone know the opposite of yellow? Just type it in the chat. There's really only one major color left. All right, here's our yellow. Can anyone guess? Uh, 
while I find it, actually. <laughs> All right, here we go. The opposite is purple. So let's take a look. Now, what you'll notice, though, if you think to all of the, like, baseball and football teams, you'll notice that they use opposite colors as their colors. Like, I think, what, purple and yellow would be, like, the Vikings. I think they have some yellow in their logos. Chicago Bears, uh, they have uh, blue and orange. Um, who has green and red? I'm trying to think. I bet there is somebody out there. But I want you guys to pay attention to that. You'll see, once you understand these opposite colors, you're going to see them everywhere. They're used to get people's attention. So notice how bright the yellow looks when it's next to purple. All right? Let's try even a different shade of purple over here. You'll see that this really amplifies it. So these are, if you ever wondered what, when somebody says color theory, that's basically what we're learning right here. All right, so if I wanted to darken up this yellow, I could add some of this purple into the mix. So let's do the same thing by adding some purple in. And instead of using black, that's gonna be a much, much more believable shadow. And you might be like, wait a second, why isn't this purple? Like what color did we just make by mixing those two together? Well, it's actually something we call like a neutral color, which is gonna be brown. So a lot of people wonder like, okay, what is brown? And certainly, you know, if you buy a set of colored pencils, you might get a pencil that's called brown, right? You could say, this one's called light umber. This one's called dark umber. Okay, but those are names for like actual pigments, things you find in nature that give it this color, right? Oh, Kate's talking about the Swedish colors, right? So that would be, it's actually blue and yellow, but it's, since it's close to its opposite, it is a pretty vibrant color, right? But when we go back to mixing some of these colors, when you mix two opposites together, you create brown, believe it or not. So the thing is, is that browns can take on a whole variety of colors. You could have like a greenish brown, you could have a reddish brown, you could have an orangish brown, you could have a purplish or bluish brown. That's the beauty of color theory. And it's not always straightforward, but once you realize that it's a mix of the opposite color, you're gonna be way ahead of most people in understanding how to mix your colors. Okay, and might as well, let's go look to see what adding black does because it does something pretty specific. You know what? I can't even find my black colored pencil because <laughs> I avoid using it at all costs. So forget it. Like I'm not even gonna use the black colored pencil and that's kind of a unique coincidence. All right, so without further ado, let's try practicing this stuff. And uh, I have this coloring sheet that if you wanna download it, it's in the link. It's the first link in there. It's from my Google Drive. You can either print it out or if you like digital art, you could certainly pull that in. It's just a PDF. All right, so I'm gonna start off with this tank here. Now we're gonna start off by making this a red gas tank, all right? So I'm gonna pick out a color red, and instead of loading up on anything else, uh, let's see, I'm gonna pick this red, I gotta sharpen it, and then I'm gonna be finding its opposite. So what color am I searching for now? If I have a red color and I'm looking for its opposite, who remembers? I'm sorry that I'm treating you guys like my classroom. This, like after nine years of being a teacher in an art classroom, I just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> keep asking questions and like oh anyone anyone Bueller all right so I got my, my nice uh, sharpened red pencil and if you forgot it's gonna be green so I have this light green and then I'll try to find more of like a forest green in case I need things to get a little darker okay so I'm just gonna lightly shade this in with red okay and notice I'm holding the pencil far back. I'm using the edge of the pencil to shade this thing in. With a nice light coat, I'm gonna leave the letters as white as I can. All right, that's a nice light coat. But I wanna make it look like this thing is, is round. So it actually has some shape to it. It's not just a flat shape. 
So I want it to kind of bulge out. And that means if we pretend like the light is coming from up on the top, that means the top is going to be much lighter than the bottom. So I'm actually going to go over this again with my the side of my pencil. I'm going to start by just darkening this, just like I was shading in black and white, just up to here. So I have my red. But you might notice that it's not very dark. Even if I press all the way down and really blend this thing out, there's really not much going on there in terms of getting it very dark. So what are our options? Let's try mixing it with its opposite. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this light green. We'll see how that looks. Coloring on the side. And I'm darkening up the red as we go. You can't see any of the green, but it's definitely darkening that up, right? So notice that without adding any black, I just created a darker color, but I don't lose what we call saturation. Saturation is like how juicy a color is. You know, like gray is not a saturated color. There's no color in it, right? It's just in between white and black. Juicy colors or saturated colors are ones that have like virtually no gray in them, okay? So think of like a sponge. Like if a color is really juicy, like a piece of fruit, right? It has a lot of saturation. If it's gray, like an old TV show, black and white, it has no saturation. So here we go. We just added this stuff in. I'm going to go back in with my red and just start to shape this gas tank a little bit more. And I'm showing you this so you can think about color the same way. So I'm just bringing that red up, leaving that stripe in. Okay. Now what about a darker red? If you have colored pencils, the nice thing is, is that you might have something of a color that's close to it. So just for the fun of it, I'm going to take this like pretty vibrant orange, which is pretty close to a red, right? I'm just going to add it up towards the top as it gets closer to the light part. Maybe that'll just give it some unique expression. Nothing wrong with that. But since I added some orange in here, there's nothing saying I can't mix multiple colors. If I wanted to get even darker, since I have some orange up here, Maybe I mix it in a little bit. Let's add some opposite of that, which would be blue, right? So I have my blue pencil here, and let's lightly start shading in that blue to add to that shadow. So we created this bulging shape that's a little bit more unique. We didn't use a single piece of black, right? All right. So let's talk about something like this. Now this seat is going to be more of like, we'll try to create more of like a leather color, something that's like brown. So let's try to think about if we couldn't use a brown colored pencil, think of like a baseball glove, like that leather color. How would we create that if we we're mixing it with colored pencils? You lost your brown colored pencil, okay? And now you got to create it using your regular colors. Now, I like to think of uh, these ideas, like especially a color, think of them as warm or cool. Warm colors end up being somewhere in between yellow and red. So red, yellow, orange, and then cool colors are definitely more like green, blue, and purple. If we think of that leather, do you think of that as a warm or a cool brown? Okay, brown is a tricky thing, but I like to think of that really like nice like cowhide color. That's definitely kind of warm, right? So warm colors are red, orange, and yellow. And I'm going to start just lightly shading in with orange. This, this orange is like neon, so I'm going to put that aside. I'm just going to pick something like this to start. And I'm going to lightly shade that in. It's almost yellow, right? Okay. So now I have this kind of yellow, yellowish base color. And I'm going to try to mix in. Before I mix the opposite, I'm just going to figure out, I'm going to go with this reddish orange on the side very lightly 
where there might be kind of a shadow. Again, you guys can play around, like improvise, make something that is uniquely your own. Okay, so I'm. this looks a little bit crazy, but I think it looks pretty close already. And we're just going to tone that thing down just a little bit more. So if we had to tone this thing down, it's basically yellow and orange. So the opposite, let's say it's orange, all right? So the opposite of orange is going to be, think Illini, Chicago Bears. Uh, we have three, two, one, blue, right? The opposite is going to be something that we can tone this down. Now I'm lightly sketching this in. But the blue is going to help this turn and appear a little bit more brown, believe it or not. It not, might not be perfect, but it's definitely going to take the edge off of that really, you know, really bright and warm color. And you can adjust this. I'm lightly going over it. It's almost like massaging it into the paper. But isn't it amazing how that now kind of looks brown and we didn't use a brown colored pencil? So why am I showing you this? It's because I want you to know that an artist doesn't just take for granted what's in the box or what name they put on the pencil or the paint tube. They are breaking it down even farther. They're understanding how color works. And that's something to aspire to. To be honest, I didn't start thinking about this until probably about five years ago. And I'm 32 and I've been a professional artist you know, uh, for the last 10 years. So I'm not saying that you have to master this. It's just something to think about. So when you look at another person's artwork, you can see, oh, wow, there's not any black in there. It's really just a mix of its two opposite colors. And even if you just watch a, you know, a baseball or football game, you're going to see like, oh, wow. That's that's an opposite color. So if you can think of another team or another example of where, uh, you know, an advertisement, a poster, a billboard uses that. Once you understand this, you won't be able to unsee it. So uh, it's a really cool idea. All right. So we color covered some blending ideas here, but we can also do some things, especially if you want, um, you know, if you don't want to use your white or gray or black pencils. The interesting thing is how else would you do that? So one way that I do it, if you want to make something that's a little bit more creative than just making black and white, is start to think of your darker colors as blue and purple. So let's say I wanted to make these pipes look kind of shiny. What's cool about shiny objects is they have a really white, what we call a highlight or a reflection. And I'm going to use a regular pencil just to sketch in just kind of a long little like teardrop shape that goes all the way up the side of this thing. And we're going to leave that perfectly white. I'm going to zoom in for you guys so you can see this a little better. All right, there you go. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. It's a long teardrop shape. I'm going to leave that white. Okay. But. I'm going to start off by finding, taking my blue and just coloring in these pipes, except for that white spot that I created. As you can tell, I didn't sharpen this pencil. That's going to help me out a lot. So I'll do that real quick. Now you're probably getting frustrated. You notice that like it's kind of really uh, what do you call it? There's like a texture to the paper, so you're not getting really juicy, saturated colors. You see that texture of the paper in there. And we're going to talk about how to get nice, really solid colors in there. We're shading that in, leaving it nice and shiny. And so if I were to draw this, you know, I'm, I'm using the blue instead of my black, right? Have you ever heard of like blue steel? That's what I'm trying to think of right now. All right, so let's look right next to that little teardrop shape. I'm gonna create a dark line. So I'm pressing harder now. Okay, 
And then on the opposite side, I'm just going to put, it looks like my pencil lead broke. Let me sharpen that again. On the opposite side, I'm going to do the same thing. Now putting a dark color next to a really light one is a great way to make it look shiny. And then on the opposite edge, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap if you still have it. I'm just going to kind of put a dark line so I leave another line in between there. That's kind of like a reflection. Now at the end, I'm going to kind of draw an arch across and then do the same thing. Dark, light, dark. Okay. So that's how we make it look reflective. Let's try it again on the second pipe. It's supposed to be shiny, so I make it dark here, dark on the other side, and then dark along the edge. When I do this arch across here, dark, light, dark. That's starting to look shiny. We can do the same thing if we kind of continue that same pattern along the bottom of the pipe, leaving kind of a light little stripe in there. You could bring it all the way up here if you want. That little white stripe that we're adding in there, it's called a highlight, right? It's making it look nice and shiny. But what do we do? It looks way too blue. So what's interesting is we could use the opposite color, which would be orange, to knock back some of those areas that we don't want to look blue. But I'm going to keep it out of that white area. That's the trick. I'm using kind of a darker orange here. But I'm going to go into those areas very lightly, and I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more neutral or gray. So what's interesting is when we combine the two colors at the perfect amount, it takes the saturation out. They almost cancel each other out, which is kind of weird. Have you ever had like noise canceling headphones? That's essentially what these colors are doing. So notice, compare this pipe with this one. You can't really tell what color that is. We think of it as like kind of like a gray. That's what the beauty of this is. We're not even like playing with like anything crazy here. It's just that the science of color is totally fascinating. You can spend your entire life just experimenting with it, and you'll just find out all these really unique combinations. And we haven't touched our black or gray or anything like that. And honestly, one of the secrets of, especially the Impressionist painters, there's a myth that they never used any black paint. I'll give you a giveaway, but they actually did. They did use it in some cases but very, very little and very, very sparingly. So look at that. We just created something that's a little bit more gray, something that we probably wouldn't even have thought of, but we also created this nice shining effect, okay? So what about some of the other areas? I'm gonna leave that to you. I want you to, if you can post a picture of your colored motorcycle, that'd be awesome. You could even try to add like a rider up here or you know modify this to however you'd like. But let's go in, um, you know, you can certainly use gray, but I want to teach you, before we go in there, you can blend these things to make them a little bit smoother, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is take out what I call a blending stump right here, okay? You can use just a balled up tissue, okay? I think I just lost mine, but what you can do is twist it up. I've shown it in another video, and you can just press it in. Let's take a look, but I'm going to make sure that this is relatively clean. And I'm just going to start by going into that shadow and really pressing down. We'll see if we can get this to look even smoother. So we laid down our color, and now we're just blending it. The beauty of a blending stump is you can use it like a pencil, right? And with these soft, like if you upgrade to something like this, I'm not going to lie, these pencils are pretty expensive. If you upgrade to the Prismacolors or any other soft colored pencil, you can. the beauty of them being soft is you can blend them a ton. right? So we're almost smearing it, but we're also mixing those colors together. 
and you're getting these beautiful soft transitions that look more believable, especially on something like this, supposed to be nice and smooth and polished. Now let's go to our seat here. We laid down the color, but if we blend it together, you're gonna notice that the color gets a little bit richer. We don't see the little white spaces, or what I call the teeth of the paper. We're creating a mix that is a little bit smoother and we don't just get that texture effect. Let's go to our tank now. now the only thing about these blending stumps or your thing is if you put on a different color, it may transfer, but let's see what happens when we just blend this thing together. You see how it looked like really chunky? Now when I blend it in, looks like it's all one nice mix. So if you think about what a colored pencil is compared to a regular pencil, is it's basically just a bunch of color stuff, but it's mixed together with a combination of like wax and other types of like glue and stuff. So if you're having trouble, if it's like building up almost like a crayon when you do that too many times, this is a really great way to, um, yeah, when you uh, blend those things together. So I'm just checking in on the comments. Uh, Let's see. So, oh, I guess uh, Rick had a motorcycle. It was gold with a shiny exhaust. Um, <laughs> yeah, especially when they got hot. All right. Well, again, if you do ride a motorcycle, wear a helmet. Um, and if you go to my Instagram, you can actually see I, a couple of years ago, I did a, a three month long motorcycle trip. It was about 2,500 miles through the country of Vietnam and Cambodia. So check out my Instagram. You can see some pictures and a little bit of video of that trip if you're interested uh, in living an adventurous lifestyle. So only an artist gets to live as, an, you know, very adventurous, but anyway, I digress. All right, so, oh, by the way, if you have questions, jump in. We're at about 40 minutes, uh, so I certainly want to get you guys the most information. But we're gonna take a break from this real quick I want to show you a few other things about your pencils that no matter what you're using, how can you get the most out of them? Now, my favorite tip, okay, and no pun intended because we're going to be talking about the tip of the pencil. If I just draw a line here, it's a pretty fat line. And the problem with colored pencils is they have a tendency. I feel like this is kind of out of focus. Give me one second to fix it. But... The problem with colored pencils is they have a tendency to be a little bit um, soft, and that means that their their pencil sharpness goes away pretty quickly. And one way to fix that is, number one, just keep an eye on where your uh, stuff is at all times. So just check the tip. Uh, hopefully that's in better focus. All right looks pretty good let me know if i can clarify anything guys okay so if we look over here it's a pretty dull shape now instead of sharpening all the time i am going to try to just sharpen this a little bit more and you can kind of get a little bit more of a angle on there for this okay let me take a look here Okay, it's still pretty blunt. Let's try a little bit more. But it can be frustrating when this thing starts to break off. So how do you get a really crisp line? Well, when I talked about, like, see how you can see that texture of the paper in this line? That's what we call the tooth of the paper. It's little ridges in there, and the top of them scrapes off the little bit of pencil color on there. So if we take a blending tool, what are we doing? We're actually just smashing down those little teeth and really grinding it into the paper so we don't see those little white parts. Now, if I want a really sharp, straight line, what I'm gonna do is take advantage of those teeth. So if I have a scrap piece of paper, I'm gonna rub my pencil on the side a little bit, and what's gonna happen is one side is gonna get ground down flat. So I don't know if you can see that, but it definitely got to an edge, right? If I even take it to the other side and grind it down from that angle, what I'm doing is creating a knife edge on the tip of my pencil, okay? Now it is flat, so I'm gonna take the knife edge direction. I want you to see the difference in the line. 
Look at how sharp that line is, right? So by controlling the tip of your pencil, almost sculpting it, you can create a bunch of really unique effects. And so if I wanted to, I could actually do some cross hatching with colored pencil, get really fine details, and I'm not just blending color anymore, I'm cross hatching or creating a beautiful texture. So we can blend color another way. Here's these blue lines. Let's try something out if we were just to add orange. Let me create that same knife edge. Let me just... Okay, and we'll create some lines that go across now. So talk about creating some vibrant pictures, you can use these to your advantage. I'm using the opposite color to do some shading. So there's all sorts of unique approaches to this. All right. So let's try um, one other approach. I do have some darker, oh, believe it or not, I did find my black pencil. There it is. So let's take a look at when would you use a black colored pencil. So let's go back to our coloring uh, object here, okay? And I just want to show you, we talked about like that juicy sponge, okay? Saturation. So all these colors are fully saturated. They don't have any black in them. They don't have any major areas of white in them unless we leave the paper blank. But black has zero saturation. There's no color in it. Black is the absence of light and color. So what happens when we add black is it's so powerful right that it can has a tendency to flatten some objects so even when i shade it in i want to be very careful i'm just hinting at it maybe i just lay on a little bit of shadow but you'll notice it just picks up re i'm i'm touching super light right now but i'm just going to add a little bit so this is like the really dark shadow here but you'll see you can create some pretty unique shapes so see how i added that contour and then Deep in there, I'm just going to put a line that says, you know, that's the edge of the tank. Really makes that edge pop out. So if you're going to use black, use it to blend around edges and really punch up some areas that would be perfectly in shadow. So let's take a look right here where the seat meets this thing. Let's put a dark line there. And then let's blend a tiny bit of shadow out. See, these are details that as an artist you got to hunt for. You know, your regular viewer probably won't see it, but it makes all the difference in the end. How about this seat? Okay, let's add a little bit of shadow. Same thing. We're adding this general ridge to make it look like it's nice and soft. A little bit of shadow over here. And then let's put a nice sharp line in there to make it look like it really curls around under that seat. You see how this thing is looking nice and soft now? Let's go back to our pipe now. Now this is the trick. I don't want you to go crazy with the black here. I'm going to focus on getting this black line right next to, right next to the white one, right in the middle. So be careful with this, but you're going to see how this looks even shinier once we put this black line directly next to it. Right? It really pops it out. So right next to it, and then a little bit on the side, and then some over here too. And this is taking advantage of how our eyes work. We only notice like the color that we see once it's mixed. And we also notice how light and dark something is. So your brain doesn't naturally think, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's green. It's a mix between blue and yellow. You have to think that on your own. But now that you have these skills, you're going to be able to pick this stuff up and reconstruct it in your own artwork. So you see how that just really popped that stuff out? And how much black have I been using? Very, very little. Okay. So use your... Uh, I'm trying to think of an analogy for the black, right? It's like it's like the salt and pepper of your drawing, okay? 
a little bit is really nice for some seasoning. But if you dump the whole thing and the lid comes off, it ruins your dish. So think of your, uh, your black pencil as kind of the salt and pepper, okay? So we're just seasoning this drawing. We're marinating it. If you can tell that I'm getting hungry, it's because it's true. So now that we're adding this black, what does it do for us? It just, I, like you can kind of get lost. You can't really see it too much in my camera, but if you're trying this out, you can start to zoom in. If you got up to an art museum and you look closely and you're like, wait a second, that's not a gray steel thing. That's blue and there's some red glowing in there. Some really satisfying things about paintings. Once you get up close, you can see the details that the artist put in there for you to discover, okay? The other thing is, is that really beautiful pieces of artwork are only made possible by these unique combinations because if somebody is still mixing with black and white, like, I don't know if you've ever tried thinking about this, like, okay, what happens to red if we add a bunch of white to it? Does it get lighter? Certainly, yes. Like, it does become lighter. But what happens to the color? Does it change? Does it always stay red? No, it goes to pink. Pink is a really dull, unsaturated color, right? There's just tiny amounts of red in there, and it totally changes it. We have a different name for it. It's not even red anymore. So white, in the same way that black is being used, doesn't really help us very much. So an artist is always looking for ways to avoid black and white. And when they do use it, they want to be sure that they're doing the right thing. So um, this is the thing. We're kind of getting towards the end here. I'll be doing a little bit more sketching. We'll see if we can really blast through this. Um, I am going to try one more. Let's add this like color plate uh, and we'll try out a different combination since we didn't get to use. Uh, what did we do? We got purple or sorry, red and green. We did. This is more of an orange and blue. So I, let's try um, a purple and yellow here. So I'm going to do a light purple shade in here. And we're just going to lay it in. I'm going to leave that little logo thing in. Notice that I try not to press too hard. Like I was talking about at the beginning, I'm not digging my pencil in. Just massaging that color over the paper. I got a nice base coat there. Now, to darken this up, I could press a little harder, so I might do that to start. I'm going to do it on the right side here to make this look a little rounder. So I'm adding some color on the right side. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe a little bit of dark color on the outside. So this is what we call a monochromatic mix, when you're just using one color and you're pressing harder to get darker spots. Right, so we're starting to get a sense of the shape and the form of this thing. Right, there's like a shadow underneath there because it pops out. What do you think? Now, if we really wanted to make this thing to the next level, we're going to mix our opposite. Now, what's really crazy when you think about this, this is purple right here. All right, and we're going to try to make it darker by adding a lighter color. That really doesn't make too much sense when you think about it, but... From what we've learned today is we can't trust it. So here's my yellow. It's literally lighter than this one, right? So how is it possible it's going to darken it up? Well, we learned that at the beginning. Think of the Vikings if you're having trouble. Yeah, Kate, thank you. It does look 3D. And that's the beauty of this stuff. What was going to be a coloring book, right? We're taking this to the next level. So now that you know this stuff, especially if you have to do any coloring assignments for your next, you know, online assignment and send in a picture, they're going to be blown away that <laughs> you had to do some coloring sheet and now it looks like the Mona Lisa. All right. So I'm excited for you guys. This totally changed my life once I started taking this color mixing technique into my own hands. Okay, here we go. Here's the yellow. I'm going to darken this stuff up. I'm just overlaying it. On the outside first, and then I'm going to just lay it in over that shadow. Look how much it darkened it up, right? I could even go over these little vents here. Yeah, and if you look closely, you might see some yellow. That's the craziest part. But from a distance, your eye starts to mix them together. So let's just kind of 
do a little bit of mixing there. And then maybe what I'll do is just go to town with this on this side to make it even more saturated or juicy. So that's your purple part. It's really getting some saturated purple. So I want you guys to just have some fun with this. Try mixing your opposite colors instead of just relying on that black pencil. But then there's nothing more satisfying than punching this thing up with that black pencil at the end. So if I really want to just outline this shape, there's my little logo on the side. And then maybe you can beef up that shadow on this dark side. I'll tell you what, that's looking pretty sharp. It's literally popping out from that side, right? Very little black. This is the salt and pepper, like I said before. So again, you guys are on your way to really unlocking the world of color and thinking about it like an artist and not just, you know, oh, I just got to fill in the lines. You can fill in the lines, but look at what we did to that gas tank. Look at what we did with this little side cover here. We made it pop out and that's what color is all about. Activate those colors. Stay away from your black. Think of it as that salt and pepper just at the end. And you are going to grow very quickly. So the last thing I want to say is thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's been so much fun doing this. And again, I did mention that uh, if you're interested in these colored pencils or if you're frustrated with some of the like basic ones, you might want to look into these. They are a little bit more expensive. And I posted uh, links in the video you can take a look at those, but just keep in mind, if you do click them, I would get a commission from Amazon, just a small percentage of your um, purchase. And uh, it's a good way to support the channel if you've enjoyed this so far. But I really want to thank everyone, especially uh, Nancy, new visitor today. Uh, ben, thank you so much for coming in today and everybody else. Um, you know, so we've had some really loyal followers. And if you know anyone who might be interested in this, you know, the live videos or any of the previous ones, we always appreciate you sharing this stuff. And so we can hopefully grow this into a sustainable community of people who are constantly trying to improve. So thank you guys for joining today. And uh, don't forget, if you did this exercise or even tried, please shoot me either a, a direct message on Instagram. Um, and I would love to see how that works. So if you post it on your profile, be sure to tag it at art underscore with underscore Anderson. And uh, if you want to put the hashtag daily draw along, we'll get to see everybody's artwork and how we're all improving together. So thanks again. I will see you guys tomorrow at 3.30. Believe it or not, we're almost at two weeks, an episode a day. So it's been so much fun and I appreciate all of your attention and hard work. So thanks again. I'll see you tomorrow.